It was already a leap to, to plant trees and take up land that I already had from my hay production because I still had a fair amount of cattle at the time when I implemented it. And alley cropping is basically the, the idea that there's two crops, maybe more, in rows. There's really no set rule as to what the plants need to be or the product. And for me, it just happened to be cider apple trees with hay. Hi, I'm Nick Pate from Raising Cane Ranch in Snohomish, Washington. I applied for the Western Sear grant with the idea that we would compare a new alley cropping plot and contrast that to an existing alley cropping, same hay, same spacing, and same generally apple trees, and use a, a, the existing hay field as a control. And those three plots, just sort of seeing what maybe are the differences. I'm not a fortune teller, I, don't, I can't see the future as to why the ecological and economic benefits of agroforestry are. And, and that's sort of the whole reason the Western SARE research project was really important, because you don't know. And, and the only way, way to find out is to, to try and maybe make a mistake or maybe come away, you know, kind of with the jackpot, like, oh, I got this. I do believe strongly that from the ecological point of view, it makes sense. With the trees, the structure, there's some, now there's a height structure, there's an element, a new element, it's kind of a vertical element. Maybe there's gonna be a bird that lands on it. That normally wouldn't, because it'd have to fly across the whole hay field. I noticed today when we were out there that there was a big wasp nest that we should all avoid. <laughs> so there, the, you get those curious factors, and I think that to me is the big surprise, where it's like the root structure brings in mycelium, and there's sort of a new element to the, to the root structure, and not to mention the fact that the roots are gonna capture more water, whether it's a heavy rain year. This is my hay field. This is uh, what in the Western Sear Grant was the control. I think the roots of the trees act like if they're branching out and the flow is moving this way, I would imagine they're like small hurdles just to flow of water, and they trap some of that moisture. And so there's sort of, once you get out here, it's almost like a, a you know, it's like a track field without the hurdles. The alley cropping was a very lush, very dense grass. The unfortunate thing in measuring it was it was very hard for me to harvest it. I couldn't get that close to my trees. It was never just as, as clean and as efficient as it was in the hay field when that was specifically what you were doing. When we purchased the farm in 2006, the previous farmer was running a hay and beef cattle operation and we ran with that for a few years it just economically was it just put us in the hole and when you have an opportunity like western sarah to sort of help out to take away some of that initial cost um, it's it's just very important we have the results there were slight differences in the soil uh, especially the existing alley cropping you know the, the trees had been there five years so there was some slight you know more biodiversity and it's kind of exciting soils and, and grasses, like the diversity of grasses, clovers, fescue, uh, timothy, you know, just a lot of good diversity in the grass. The alley cropping plots had higher numbers of nitrogen and some of the things that matter for, for your cattle over the control. Like any scientific experiment, you want people to duplicate what you've what you've tried to do and maybe to better results or worse and prove you wrong or prove you even more right. You're reading what the land needs, you're reading what the land can hold and benefit from and then you're also looking at what you can benefit from and what you want to do. I happen to like hard cider and so that worked out well too. I'm about to pour one of my favorite ciders at Riverview Road Cidery. It's our scrumpy. It's a kind of an English variety based on Loosely for us, uh, wild fermentation. It uses all the apples hit the farm here and you basically just press, get the juice, put it in your fermenter and let it do its thing. It does no sweetener, it's just what it is. It's the most unrefined, there's no sulfites because that would kill the wild yeasts. So it's the purest cider at our farm. You know, Sarah allowed me to to take, take that risk of an experiment, take that risk to do the alley cropping. Because of the paying for the, the trees and some of the um, composts and the mulches, 
the alley cropping really fit well. It kept m the majority of the, the hay, the kind of prairie type of ecosystem. I'm imagining the apple trees will grow and will slowly kind of change from a prairie to more of a kind of forested type of system. The, the opportunities are, are enormous as, what, as to what we can do in all the different environments. For me on the floodplain, for instance, or somebody on the hill or near the mountains, uh, there's just a tremendous amount of opportunity for small farmers, for large farmers to implement these for their own benefit. And, and I mean, honestly, the benefit for you know, the water, the air, and uh, for the climate.